Hello. Grab a warm drink and get cozy as you plan with me for this first week of our fall homeschool term. Enjoy. Okay, so I start with my two big happy planners. This is the new homeschool happy planner for the year. And I am all set up already. for September. So I went ahead and chose my color scheme and sticker design before recording. It's a pretty therapeutic thing for me to do and a relaxing thing. And so I just chose green and orange to be the colors for the month. This is the dashboard that just comes with the planner. So I added a few embellishments here. And then this page is the class overview page that also comes with the planner and I I have, instead of using this version here where they have projects and important dates and deadlines and all of that, it's really not applicable. I have chosen to get this set up so that I can record what we do for morning meetings during the month of September. And then this is my September monthly view. I've done a review of this homeschool planner. There's a lot that needs to be customized in my opinion. So I've gone ahead and covered up things like chores and assignments, and I will go ahead and have our to-dos up there. I will cover this up as well. I've marked places already with stickers for field trips and special events. I've highlighted the holidays that we will be doing something for, and so this is my monthly view. I've then did adhesive in here to cover up the grade tracker and the reading list. I thought I was gonna be able to use them. I tried for our summer school time to use these and it just was an extra step that I didn't need. And so I've gone ahead and just glued them together for September so that I can get to this weekly view that I want. So this is what my weekly views look like. If I have an event or something, I've put stickers on there to mark it off. These are post-it notes that I've made. I used Dakshina's tutorial and I can link that below as well. So this is where I can mark off what we do during morning time, any extra things that we do. I'm also gonna add math and language arts and handwriting here so that I'm not tracking it really anywhere else because I don't need to write every day that we're doing math or every day we're doing language arts. I just wanna track that we've done it because we have workbooks and things that they would that my kids go through. So this is the first week. This is the second week. Same idea with the post-it notes, the stickers to mark things out. I have left that side of important assignments, don't forget, weekly focus, all of that on there still. This is the third week in September, marked off again, like our weekly focus is gonna be the beginning, official beginning of autumn. And then this is the, the last week in September. So I have each of the weeks kind of marked off based on what we did, what I've marked in the monthly view. For this first week, I know that we have a field trip here. We're doing a kickoff for the first day of school. I've already done all the prep work for that. And then this day we get together with our Amish neighbors and make applesauce. And we've actually done all the prep work that we need to do for that as well. Now to get into the details of how I actually plan the week. I get my cup of tea, then I get my Second happy planner that this is one that I have just put together. It's like a Franken planner, but really it's just my setup. So I have pulled together random tabs from planners that I don't use anymore. I have an academic calendar. And then I have done all of this over summer. I've broken out our curriculum and how many weeks it will take for, and this is for the morning time. So character building, that's Bible study also, music, art, grammar, because we do that together as morning time to just review it. So because this is on a loop scheduling, I will not 
plan this out. We'll just get the basket together and pull that out and then whatever we do, I'll check it off here and I'll just do a check here. If we read the authorities first section in our 24 Family Ways by the Clarksons, I'll check it off there and I'll just check here. Yep, we did it and that's good enough. And the same thing with music. If we read our Usborne book, I'll just check off, yep, we did music, uh, we studied a composer, whatever it is, I'll just mark it here, but this is where I'm tracking our progress through our spines. Same thing with art, I'd mark it here, um, and grammar as well. There's also additional lines here in this morning time posted of you know poems and scripture, Spanish, all of that, so that also gets tracked here. They just don't necessarily have a spine to go with them. This is my history section, and we will be here for September 6th. So I've taken our Blossom and Root River Voices curriculum and broken it down by what we're doing for each week, any additional resources that we may use, any links here, like we're gonna, there's a geography lesson here that we'll do that's linked to geography. There's an arrow for one of our independent reads and read alouds that we're doing, Children of the Longhouse by Joseph Bruchak. I have a note there that I need to buy the arrow. And then these are all the books that we have on our shelf and what pages that we will use in them. And so all I need to do is look through here and see we're gonna start there for this first week. So when putting these projects in, I've already gone through the books and the resources in Blossom and Root River of Voices to figure out that of all of the activities that are suggested, these are the two that we may want to do. So I just need to make sure that I have the supplies for that and that we're ready to go. We're going to need corn husks, so that's easy to find in our area. And so I'm going to want to write here that I need to get some corn husks. So the next thing that I wanna do is make sure that I don't have any printouts that I need to do for this lesson. I also have Homeschool in the Woods where I print out their black and white figures with text on sticker paper so that we can cut them out and put them into our book of centuries. So I need to make sure I have those figures ready to go. So there's nothing marked in here that says that I need to do any extra printouts. It does have a note that I need to check geography lesson number one. So when I go back to my geography tab, we are using Beautiful Feet Around the World picture books and this year we're doing the number two. This lists our spines and so for the first lesson, we're just gonna go over the kinds of maps and I know these two are books that we read. I don't need to print anything out for that. So the next thing that I do is I go into our science unit. Again, I've taken the Good and the Beautiful Birds unit that we're using and broken it down by dates and times. I knew when I planned this that this first week would be a busy week. We actually, if you can believe it, have two field trips and so we're not doing anything on our science unit for this week. I can see also for next week, I don't have any needs and even the following week, there's no prep work needed for me to be able to do this. So I'm good on science. We are not, we're starting the Children of the Longhouse, so I need to get the arrow, which I can write that down, which we already talked about. So I need to, I'm gonna put it under assignments. I need to get the arrow for Children of the Longhouse. Every year we come to the same topics. And so this week is apples. It's just how we start off. Every year we do applesauce with our Amish neighbors. And ever since the kids were little, we have done apples. And so I get our picture books off the shelf. I'm a firm believer that no matter how old or young you are, picture books are a great resource. And so I will pull them out and we will just read them during our morning time. And so I will add these into our morning basket rotation for the week. The next step that I also like to do is just review, especially at the beginning of the month, just review any needs that we may have. You can see the end here in September, we're gonna make Peruvian pollo. So I need to make sure that I have all of the ingredients for that. And so I will make a note here. Don't forget, review Peruvian pollo. 
and that I've written the page number in my notes. So I'll write page 105 and beautiful feet to make sure that I have all of the ingredients that we need for that. I've already done that for science. I will also do that for geography. I have it all linked. That fourth week, I am going to have library books. You can tell because they're underlined here. I've literally just copied and pasted this from the geography section, but I need to make sure that I reserve those library books so that we have them in time for this week. So, and I can add Peru library just to myself to make sure that I remember to do that. Okay, so you may be saying, wow, that is a plain planner page and it is true. So you've seen the detail that I have in what I've outlined from the curriculum that we have, that I've printed on the computer. This is more of a memory keeping back planning tool for me. I will record our field trip. I print out small pictures that fit right inside of these columns using my Canon selfie. So when we go on our field trip, we'll take a picture. I'll use pick stitch to format it correctly and print it out right here. I will do the same for Thursday. And then here, as I read any of these picture books, I will put it here. As we do history lessons, I will record in here generally things we've done. Science, I'll record generally things we've done as compared to what is outlined in the plan. So this is the plan and this is what actually occurs and this is what we look at year over year because there's photos in here and notes. I will write in here a narrative on whatever funny thing might happen, something somebody said, something that we've talked about that I want to make sure that I've recorded, we've talked about it. Thanks so much for joining me for my plan with me. I hope you've gotten ideas on how to use the new homeschool happy planner in a way that is functional and works for you and your family. If you have any suggestions or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I love to hear new ideas and talk with you guys in the comments. Until next time.